Genesis chapter 42, verses 1 to 3. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. When Jacob saw, whatever you can see, you can seize. When Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, yes, what did he do? He said to his sons. He said to his sons. Why do we why do ye look one upon another? Why do ye look one upon another? And he said, Behold, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Wow. Get ye down either. Yes. And buy for us from them. Yes. That we may live and not die. Wow. Verse 3. Yes. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody shall say, Praise the Lord. Now, Isaac was their father. The Bible says, All the sons were looking at each other. The father was looking at father. The father said, I see corn in Egypt. Why are you guys looking at each other's faces? Do you know? Most of us are busy looking at each other, competing with each other, looking at our immediate environment. Meanwhile, there's corn beyond your borders. There's an anointing that will take you beyond borders. You begin to see opportunities and, and, and blessings and jobs and, and promotions and liftings beyond your immediate environment. Somebody who is still fighting with his uncle for a piece of land, he can't see beyond borders. You are fighting for family possession. Ah, ah. Why are you looking at each other? Lift your eyes and see there is corn in Egypt. More than enough. More than enough! There's an anointing that will break protocol. Yes! You begin to do things and begin to receive ideas that are not common to your immediate environment. Where everybody around you is talking about uh, the main business now. Let, let's do Babi Salon. Let's do what else? You know? Yahoo Yahoo. Boys are still in their pants. I watched a video, a lady washed her underwears, put them outside, sat down, held a glass. She said she will stay there until the pants are dry. It has become that bad. Why are you looking at each other? There is corn in Egypt. I said there is corn in Egypt. I said there is corn in Egypt. There is blessing beyond your immediate environment. So why are you competing with each other? Why are you competing? You all, why, why should we all sit down here and be looking at each other's faces? But why is it awful? Not today. And so we see how. You don't take. Huh? It's after today. There is corn in Egypt. There is corn in Egypt. There are opportunities outside your immediate environment. The Father says, today, I'm going to anoint you guys. I'm going to send you guys out. Whatever business you do, whatever area you are functioning in, I'm going to release the anointing upon you. He said, you will go there and buy. That means you are going out to do business. And when you go out to do business, you will dominate that business. You will dominate that community. You will dominate that environment. When they are talking about, you see, you see, the father of Jesus, the foster father of Jesus was called Joseph the Carpenter. He wasn't a carpenter. He was the carpenter. When this anointing comes upon you, whatever you do, if there are 20 people doing it on your street, you will be the one doing it. Lord, I wish somebody can catch this this morning.
blessing me. Why is he following me here? I say you will stand out. This anointing will stand you out. I say this anointing will stand you out. Can I get a receiver here this morning? Look beyond waters. Somebody has an anointing to do that. Since we are anointed and released them, say, Go! That's the anointing. Go and excel. As we step into 2019, we are receiving the anointing today. We are going to anoint everyone with oil. And as you receive that anointing, I want you to know there's a supernatural empowerment that has come upon you. Whatsoever you lay your hands upon, it shall prosper. Now, I was going to take time to cook the teaching on the anointing today, but I can't because I still want us to give time to those who travel that are not back yet. Let, let, we have, let us have a flat house. Are you following me here? All right, so we can. Uh, that thing. everybody needs to understand this and anyone who is not around by the next week or the week after I mean I mean that's somebody who really wanted to miss it <laughs> praise God all right well give opportunity okay so I'm going to push it to that time amen, amen. but today somebody is receiving an anointing amen. hallelujah an anointing to succeed an anointing to excel amen. you see when you see people in politics, so many of them who are excelling in politics, there are powers behind them. Powers backing them. They understand that you cannot just go to Egypt like that. No. The Egyptian gods will deal with you. You have to go with power. See, there are some in politics who go, actually go and they try to appease the Egyptian god. So they subject themselves to the authority of the Egyptian God so that the Egyptian gods can become their benefactors. But when you go, you are not going to submit to the Egyptian God. You are going with the, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When you go, you dominate all of those who are oppressed by Juju and Cham and kids making sacrifices to get there. Because Jesus has paid the ultimate sacrifice for you. Go there with dominion. You can't just go with an ordinary hand. You need the power of God. There are some people, there are some people who are doing the same business you do, and they are working day and night to make sure your business goes down. But there's an anointing that will lift you up and cause your table to overflow in the presence of your enemies. Listen, every big one, the fact that an organization is big does not mean there is anointing there. Are you listening to me here? They came to Jesus one day. They said, John sent us to find out from you, sir. Are you the Christ? Or should we wait for another? Jesus said, go and tell them that my congregation is big. No, what somebody said? Huh? Jesus said, go and tell them that I just took selfie with the president. That Jesus said, go and tell them, see my invitation letter to Asher Rock. How do we know that you are the Christ? What is the Christ? The anointed one. How do we know that the anointing is upon your life? He said to them, go tell John what you have seen and heard. Tell them that black eyes are open. Deaf ears are open. The lame walk. Go and tell John, I am the anointed one. Go and tell John. That is the ID card of an anointed man. That is the ID card of an anointed church. See, this is the reason that the devil tries to push in faith into the system that will do things that look like miracles, but they are lying wonders. So that his own agents can be mistaken for the anointed. Because the mark of the anointing is the supernatural manifestation. Hallelujah. I don't care the 22, 200,000 principles you teach. If you can't see the signs, wonders, and miracles, you are not anointed. You may be educated, but not anointed. Right? Is anybody hearing me here this morning? Yeah. And the truth is, if you want education, go to school. But if you want the anointing, 